Joining me now are two of those black women, former Chief Justice of North Carolina Supreme Court and current Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate, Sherry Beasley, and Iowa Democratic candidate for Governor Deidre DeGere. So happy to have you both ladies. Um, recently, Political, Politico uh, wrote for you, uh, Ms. Beasley, that you accomplished a feat that has all too frequently eluded candidates of color, especially black women managing to clear the Senate primary fields of heavyweight competition. So I'm really curious because when we get to the midterms this fall, what's your strategy to win in the general? You know, I thank you, Tiffany. I'm really excited. This is, uh, I'm I think really we might be having trouble husband. with your audio. I want to make sure that my viewers can hear you. Uh, I am having trouble thank hearing you. I want to make sure my viewers can. Okay, we can hear you. Can Go you right hear ahead. Me? Okay, awesome. Tiffany, thank you so much. My husband, Kurt, and I have raised our sons uh, twin sons in North Carolina in a home in faith, some... and, oh, and I've right served ahead, as Chief Justice and, 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 and judge and spent my life in public service in North Carolina, really working hard for folks. And I know that Washington has failed the people here in North Carolina, and I'm fighting to make sure we address the issues people care deeply about around lowering costs and affordable health care and voting rights and so much more. You know, the reality is We've been an amazing opportunity. People in North Carolina are really excited about my campaign. Uh, we have support from all 100 counties across uh, the state, and people are deeply engaged. I've been meeting people in backyards and small businesses and places of worship and, and all over the state. And so people really understand the importance of this election. They've been really excited about my candidacy. Well, I want to stick with you on this because um, in 2018 and 2020, black voters in North Carolina were twice as likely to have their mail-in ballots rejected compared to any other race. This is not something new uh, to, to black voters. Uh, is your campaign dealing with any other voter suppression efforts? And what uh, impacts could these have on your potential victory in the fall? You know, I will tell you this. It will be a fight. It will be a tough fight. But I've never backed down from, from a fight. You know, we know that some elected officials are working really hard to make voting harder, and it just means we've got to work harder. Some folks are working to try to silence us, and it means that we've got to speak out louder. This is not an election to sit out. Uh, there's too much at stake, and people are struggling here in North Carolina for, um, a lack of, uh, from, from rising costs, from lack of access to health care, to good-paying jobs. And we must work hard and make sure that we're committed to making sure that people can be successful in their lives. And that's exactly what I'm committed to doing in the United States Senate. Yes, uh, I, I know you're committed and a lot of voters are certainly committed. It's the fact that they have to leapfrog over a lot of the voter suppression uh, to still achieve victory. Um, I want to switch to you, Deidre, because, you know, North Carolina's demographics are quite different from Iowa. You're running statewide uh, in Iowa that is over 90 percent white, just as important um, as, as black candidates are black voters. How is it running in a state um, where most of your constituents don't look like you? Is that a factor in your race? And if so, does it help or hurt you or your chances? You know, I, I love this state. And the reason why I'm running for governor is because, one, I believe in Iowa and I believe in Iowa's people. And, and this is a state that feeds the world and fuels this country. Needless to say, there are a great deal of challenges that regular everyday people are facing. And so when it comes down to me connecting to both rural, suburban and urban Iowans, I meet people where they are. You know, my husband and I have cattle in the state of Oklahoma. And while I'm not going to outfarm the farmer, I know how to connect with our, our rural demographics. I'm also a small small business owner as well. And, and while our rural uh, communities rely heavily on agriculture, they also rely heavily on small business infrastructure. And unfortunately, we have a governor right now in this state that's not prioritizing people. Unfortunately, what she's doing is prioritizing politics and, and Trump's national platform. And we know all over this country that that platform does no good for people. Um, and, and, and right now, we are at a point where we can interrupt that and, and do something about it. And, and I believe we can do it in this election cycle in Iowa. DJ, I want to stick with you here because I know that you were a uh, campaign surrogate for Vice President Kamala Harris. What yeah. role do you anticipate her playing uh, on the campaign trail uh, this, this year, given that we're in midterms? And especially since you were a campaign surrogate for her, should we expect to see her uh, in Iowa stumping for you? Yeah, so I was then Senator Harris's campaign chair in the state of Iowa 
and had a great time traveling throughout the state with her. And Iowans were incredibly receptive to her vision and what she wanted to see happen for this country. Vice President Harris is doing a great deal of work right now um, in, in, in D.C., and, and we need her there. Needless to say, um, this is a, a campaign cycle where it's going to take a village all across this country. And we all know that, that President Biden and Vice President Harris are an important part of that village, not only in Iowa, but throughout this entire country. Ms. Beasley, I want to come back to you because one of the big issues, I mean, I worked in politics a long time, and I have to say one of the biggest challenges that face black women candidates, really people of color, but for this segment, I'm going to focus on black women, is the infrastructure, like who decides who's a viable candidate. So when it comes to the donor class, it's largely white and male. When it comes to the infrastructure of the Democratic Party, who they perceive who's a viable candidate, and that's where you hit roadblocks. However, you have bucked the system. Your fundraising numbers have been phenomenal. Uh, so has folks like... Uh, uh, Stacey Abrams running for uh, governor in uh, Georgia, uh, Val Demings, Congresswoman Val Demings running in Florida for Senate. Um, how do you think that is changing your chances and what has led to that change in your opinion? You know, I think it really is talking with people, meeting them where they are, uh, understanding the importance of the issues that people care deeply about. You know, I've also in North Carolina, we, we elect uh, appellate judges statewide. And so I've had two successful statewide elections. And so I've been building relationships with people across the state, talking to them about the kinds of things I care deeply about. I, I have support from all over the state, but I'm just thankful for all the support we're getting and all the energy that we're receiving and, and excitement around the importance uh, and the magnitude of this race. Well, I want to talk a, a bit of policy with you, because, as you know, the Senate is holding up a lot of policy. And, you know, essentially, Manchin and Cinema are votes 49 and 50. A lot of people have been targeting them. And one way to make them a lot less problematic and a lot less uh, of a problem is to have more senators there. So from your perspective, given that they've disagreed with some pieces of Joe Biden's agenda, are there any parts of the president's agenda that you disagree with, particularly when it comes um, to Build Back Better uh, and how he's approached voting? Voting rights. You know, I, I think uh, the kind of legislation that people in the state of North Carolina really do want are the kinds of legislation that's really grounded in humanity, the kinds of legislation that really does address access to health care. You know, I live in a, st live in a state where uh, almost 50 percent of the people who live here uh, don't earn $15 an hour. They earn less. And so there are a whole host of needs. This pandemic has certainly exacerbated a whole host of conditions for folks. You know, we need to strengthen voting rights. We need to strengthen our economy. We really must lower costs. And people certainly have a right to be disappointed by what they're seeing in Washington. And that's why I'm going to fight really hard to uphold the Constitution, uh, pass legislation that's grounded in humanity, and really work hard to fight for the people of North Carolina. Well, I thank you both uh, ladies for being here. We'll certainly keep an eye on both of these races. And uh, thank you for being with us this morning. Good luck to you both. Sherry Beasley and Deidre DeGere.